This is the Rolex Explorer reference 214270, and in this video I'm going to review it. I've had the watch now for almost two weeks, thanks to a local supporter here in Sweden, who lent me his almost brand new Rolex, so thank you very much for that. The 214270 is the latest reference of the Explorer 1. This means it's larger than the previous one, at 39mm versus 36, which is a welcomed change for a guy with a larger wrist, like me. I've asked around a bit though, and I've found out that a lot of people actually do miss the 36mm size of the previous Explorer. So it would be great to see both a 39 and a 36mm version of this watch. And who knows, maybe Rolex decides to push that out for their next Basel World release. In other dimensions, its lug width is 20mm, although I wouldn't imagine anyone switching out the amazing Oyster bracelet for something else. Its lug to lug distance is 47.3 millimeters and it's 12 millimeters thick. This gives the Explorer the look of a smaller and more compact sports watch compared to other offerings that are very popular nowadays. And I've gotta say, at first I felt like it was too small, but after just a few minutes with it on my wrist, I realized it's got the perfect size of an everyday watch. And thanks to the Oyster bracelet and the lugs that curve down a bit, it wears very comfortably as well. The bracelet is entirely brushed, except for the sides. It tapers quite dramatically, and I think it just looks fantastic. And the clasp is really great too. It's very solid, and while it doesn't require a lot of force to open and close, it feels secure and reassuring. This clasp is not equipped with Rolex's famous glide lock system, although it doesn't come empty handed. Instead, it's got the Easy Link extension, which extends or retracts 5mm of the bracelet length at ease. This comes in handy when your wrist swells in the summer or if you happen to put on a few. The case features a tasteful combination of brushed and polished surfaces, giving it a sporty yet elegant look. The sides are polished, and the bezel is too. But the rest of the case is brushed, I think it looks fantastic, and the finish work on this watch is just immaculate. It looks really, really good. It's also got 100 meters of water resistance through a screw-down crown, so sure, go ahead and swim with it, it can take it. It is a sports watch after all. Covering the dial is a dead flat piece of sapphire. And as this is Rolex, you won't find any anti-reflective coating on any of its two sides. In day-to-day -day use, the lack of AR coating is noticeable, although it's not anything I got particularly annoyed by. The dial itself is very simple. It features a gloss black base with white gold markers filled with Rolex's proprietary chromolite loom, which, by the way, is fantastic. And to make the dial a little bit more interesting, you will also find Arabic numerals at 3, 6, and 9, and also a triangle of an hour marker at 12 o'clock to help with orientation in the dark. So while this dial is very sober, and some might say boring, personally, I think it packs enough punch to not get boring with time. It's also got the same handset that's on the Submariner, giving it a little bit of a more sporty look than it would have had if it just had the Datejust or Oyster Perpetual handset instead. Powering the watch is the Calibre 3132, and as with all Rolex movements, it's built to be robust, reliable, accurate, and long-lasting. Without giving too much thought to its design or level of finishing, something that, to be honest, doesn't matter in a watch like this one. The crown action is typical Rolex, very smooth and satisfying. The movement hacks, and of course also hand winds, it's an automatic, bi-directional, self-winding movement that beats at 28,800 vibrations per hour, features 31 joules and a decent power reserve of 48 hours. It's got a parachrome hairspring and parallax shock absorbers, which toughens it up even more. And of course, also because this is a Rolex movement, it's certified by the Kosk Institute to minus four to plus six seconds per day. And after casing the watch, it's also certified in-house to make sure it meets an even higher standard of minus two to plus two seconds a day. The Rolex Explorer 214270 has impressed me with its simplistic and elegant design that really fits well in any situation. 
The size is perfect, it's very comfortable, it's well performing, it's solid, elegant and sporty all at the same time. It really is the perfect go anywhere, do anything watch. And as a conclusion, I gotta say, it's one of the best watches Rolex has to offer. If you are after a solid all-around watch for a one-watch collection, or just to have as a reliable everyday carry, buy it. You will love it. So what do you guys think about the Rolex Explorer reference 214270? Please do feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. Like and subscribe if you enjoy this video and would like to see more like it. And with that said, I'll see you in my next videos. Bye-bye.